Our next speaker uh, here this evening is Justice Sharon Kennedy, uh, currently Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court. She was appointed to serve an unexpired term and was reelected overwhelmingly in 2014 to a full term. What that means is she's up in 2020. Her wide experience in the legal profession has given her insight into every aspect of the criminal justice system. The one I found most interesting is that she was a patrol officer for the city of Hamilton, Ohio Police Department, which is not something you see most judges and certainly not most justices uh, have on their resume. The, the, even with her fabulous judicial record, our justice candidates have a problem in 2020, as every judge candidate in Ohio has. There's no party affiliation on the ballot. Uh, we likely lost the two state Supreme Court seats in 2018 because people didn't know which of them were Republicans and which of them were Democrats. So it's incumbent on us to help you to remember uh, how, or work out a way to help you remember which of those candidates is a Republican. And for Justice Kennedy, and I hope she doesn't mind, um, I want you to think Kennedy just like the president. You remember President Kennedy, you're going to be looking at that judge line, you're going to see Kennedy, and you're thinking, that's the one I want. I hope you'll remember that when it comes to the ballot box in 2020. Justice Kennedy. Well, good evening, and thank you, Chairman, for the opportunity to be here tonight. And thank you to all of you for taking time out of your lives and your evening to be here. Tonight you celebrate two men, and we think about the future of another. Even before his inauguration in 1861, Lincoln was facing a time of crisis in this country. The tripartite system of government that the Founding Fathers had given him to take care of was about to come to the end with the secession of the southern states. It was there and then he decided that the cause of our people was worthy of the sacrifices made. In your poster on the left-hand side, my left-hand side of the stage, is the ending phrase of the Gettysburg Address, so that a government of the people, and by the people, and for the people shall not perish this earth. But you also celebrate tonight President Reagan, who, like-minded with Lincoln, also believed in the tripartite system of government. Believed it so much that when he made appointments to the United States Supreme Court and other seats, he was making appointments where they honored judicial restraint. At the investiture ceremony for Chief Justice William Rehnquist and Antonin Scalia, I'm paraphrasing him, but he said the reason why judicial restraint is such a time-honored principle in the Republican Party is because it allows our republic to live. You are the voice of government with your legislative voice. You elect your representatives and you pick up the phone and say there should be this law but not this law. You elect an executive branch that goes forth and, and gives your voice effect and enforces it. But you don't expect judges to rewrite that voice to change that voice, to put a thumb on the scale and alter the voice. And in that speech at the investiture ceremony, what he was speaking about was the courts are neither liberal nor conservative because the Constitution is not liberal or conservative. What the founders gave us is a tripartite system of government based on the fact of judicial restraint so that your voice will always live. In that, you also think of Another man, President Trump. You ask anybody, one of the top five reasons why they voted for him is they knew that he would make not one, not two, but possibly three or four appointments to the United States Supreme Court. And you wanted to ensure that those judges and justices in the federal system would echo judicial restraint as spoken to by Reagan. When we became a state, the representative in the Senate in the Ohio House made all the judicial appointments. And in 1851, the people took the right to vote for their judges from the legislative branch and put it firmly in your hands. As the gentleman from Fairfield said in the 1851 debate, we have tried this great democracy, 
and we the people will be voting for our judges henceforth. We understand the principles of time that weigh upon us. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the President of the United States and you are the United States Senate every time you go to the ballot box and elect a judge. And I am asking you to have the conversation with your family and friends so that they're standing at the ballot box, they do not falter and walk out because we don't make mistakes. We either know or we leave and we need you to show up, to exercise your right to vote, your constitutional right to vote is so precious. And I ask you to do it. I ask you to vote for a conservative with a liberal sounding name. Because <laughs> you're gonna love it. God bless you and thanks.